I, I, I thought we, we talk about logic. Okay, that sounds logical. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow we all know about how to reason. I mean, we reason with our, when we're young, with our parents, with our partners, and, and, and then with our children, and so on. So we, we and, and with our bosses and uh, friends and whatever. Uh, but uh, sometimes we want to be very precise about uh, reasoning, and this sort of precise form of reasoning is uh, realized in, in, in logic, or is, is, is investigated, understood and presented in logic. And this is also sometimes quite important to not make, uh, commit any fallacies, to, 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 to adopt wrong uh, kinds of reasoning. So you really need, you really need to understand and study the, the rules of, of, of reasoning. So one uh, of the things I'm doing when I teach logic, so I teach this in the, in the second year, um, is I'm using a, a computer program, a proof assistant, called Lean, and uh, Lean uh, actually was developed uh, at Microsoft Research uh, by a guy called Leonardo de Mura, who, who also, he, he, he developed some automatic uh, proof systems. Uh, he's very famous for the Z3 theorem prover. But then he, he, he was also interested in uh, proof assistance or uh, interactive proof systems. Which, which can in, interact with automatic theorem proving. And I will explain this a bit more later, I hope. But uh, the main idea here is to have a system you can sort of interact with, or an interactive proof system. You, 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 you can, you can do, type in basically your proofs and the proof system will check whether your proof is okay. And when I want to teach uh, logic to, to students, I find this is extremely helpful because otherwise it's very hard to say what is really an accept acceptable argument. Yeah, I mean, people, they, you, you give them some examples and then you maybe ask for homework, do this. Yeah, and then they do something which looks like a proof. Yeah, but it may, you're not sure whether they really understood this or whether they just produced something which, which, which they think looks like a proof. Yeah. And, and, and proofs can be can be very subtly wrong. I mean, do you know the do you know the the proof that all horses have the same color? No. Here's a proof. It, it uses this idea of induction. So one horse has got the same color, right? Yeah. And now you have any number of horses, and you you divide them into two groups which overlap at one horse. Yeah. And now by induction hypothesis for the smaller collection of horses, you know that they have all the same color, yeah. and the horse in the middle has the same color. So horses together have the same color, right? So that's a proof that all horses have the same color, right? And this is wrong. <laughs> yeah? But these kind of proofs, they show up maybe more subtle. Sometimes you prove something which is actually correct, but your proof is, is, is flawed, yeah? Okay. So, so I think, <coughs> the, 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 for me, the best way to, to explain, uh, logic and, and, and to, to make it uh, people to understand it is to use uh, these, uh, these proof systems. Now they have another purpose as well because we can use them uh, and they are actually uh, used not everywhere but in some places to verify some systems which are either sort of safety critical or which are uh, hardware very frequently used or can be quite failure can be quite expensive and so now some companies start to use these proof systems uh, for applications yeah the best way to learn it is by doing it and here sort of a, a proof system like i'm using uh, is like the lean system which i'm using is is extremely useful and maybe i should say a bit more about uh, about lean which is now uh, also used by the mathematicians uh, i mean first it was mainly used by computer scientists and the mathematicians are a bit conservative, you know, they're not, they don't really want to change anything, yeah. Um, but actually there's this uh, a, a guy in, in Imperial College, Kevin Bothert, and he is really pushing this, and he's using, also he's using Lean also to teach uh, mathematics to the, to the mathematics undergraduate. And he has recently given a talk at the International Mathematical Congress, uh, where he has shown what they are doing, and it's quite impressive because they actually 
are able now to, to formalize very recent results in mathematics using this system and, 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 and do it uh, with this proof system. And this is impressive because these recent results, they are like icebergs, yeah? they are, they, there's lots of underwater stuff, lots of theorems that they need. Yeah? And they have done it all the way down for, for very recent theorems and uh, a really leading edge mathematics, which is very, very impressive. And, and now, uh, their current project is to formalize, you know, Fermat's last theorem, which, which says that, uh, that x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n has no solutions if n is greater than 2. But for 2 we know that 3 to the 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, yeah. But, but if it's more than squared, if it's cubed or, or anything higher, there's no solution. And, and Fermat claimed uh, that he had a proof, but nobody believes this anymore. But recently, a few years ago, uh, mathematicians came up with a proof. And uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a proof using all, all of, sort of contemporary mathematics. So it's really, really, a really like a moon landing project to formalize this. And uh, let's see whether they, whether they will able to do this. Yeah. Before we do anything very exciting like Fermat's last theorem, which we're not doing today. <laughs> um, what we start with is, is a bit like when you do learn piano, you have to play scales, right? And, and scales are a bit boring, but, but you need to, to learn them to, to, to how to move your fingers. And in logic, uh, we do something like this. We prove propositional tautologies. Yeah? So what's a tautology? I, I guess it's an example. Tautology is like a, a propositional uh, expression, which is always true. Okay, let's look at, at, at my example here. So I've now launched Lean. Actually, I'm using this Visual Studio code by Microsoft. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should also mention that Lean is, is free, so you can just download it. Uh, and I'm using Lean 3. There's no new version, Lean 4. Okay, so I, I've done some stuff there, which I'm not going to explain. But here is, is my uh, uh, tautology I want to show. So let me explain this. What does it say? Uh, I say here, if P implies Q, then not Q implies not P. So the, the, this arrow there means implies, so if then. And this little hook means not and arrow means implies. And here we could we could put some extra brackets in to make it more clear, even though they're not necessary. So here I'm saying also if P then Q then if not Q then not P. So this is a tautology. So being a tautology means whatever we plug in for P and Q, it's always true. Uh, but actually I find when I explain it, I find it useful to think of some concrete examples. So let's say P is the sun shines and Q we go to the zoo. Yeah? And now I tell my, 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 my children, if the sun shines, then we go to the zoo. The consequence of this is, if we don't go to the zoo, then the sun doesn't shine. Yeah? And you have to think for a moment uh, about this. Yeah? Why is this actually true? If I say, if the sun shines, then we go to the zoo, and we don't go to the zoo, then obviously the only possible situation is that the sun doesn't shine. For right? a child, that's yeah. probably it, isn't it? Right? Yeah, not only for a child. I mean, what is not true is if the sun shines, we go to the zoo, does not imply if the sun doesn't shine, we don't go to the zoo, because I didn't see anything uh, what happens if the sun doesn't shine. So that would be a fallacy. Yeah? Okay, okay. But if you, if you, if, if you turn it around, it's, 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 it's correct, right? And how can we see it's a tautology? How can we see it? What, what do you say? Well, can you factor out those knots? Yeah, you, you want to have some algebra here. You want to apply some algebra. Okay, that's one way. It feels like that. I'm, 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 yeah, well, in general. But people usually have seen truth tables, right? Okay. So that's yet another way uh, to, to, to check uh, propositional tautologies, yeah? But that's not what I'm... Uh, going to do today, because actually truth tables are quite okay for propositional logic, but when you move on to predicate logic, when you have quantifiers, when you talk about all the numbers or all lists to do with programs, then truth tables are not very helpful. So what we are going to do instead, we are going to look at a proof. Okay, We are going to prove this interactively. And here I said sorry. But sorry means I'm sorry, I haven't yet provided a proof. Yeah? And if I go here into the, into the beginning of this, of this proof block, 
I'm I'm seeing here some uh, uh, something. Uh, it says this this symbol here is called a turnstile, and that's what I want to prove. Right? This is the statement I want to prove, and it has removed my brackets because they're not really necessary. So Lean's done that for you. Then yeah, the yeah. Way. If I if I if I go somewhere else, nothing is visible, but if I go here, then it tells me, okay, this is your current proof state. Yeah? So how do I prove? Now I have to prove an implication. So how do I prove? I have to prove if this is the case, then this is the case. So how do I prove an implication? And the rule how to prove an implication is very simple. I use assume. I assume the, the left-hand side, which I call PQ, and I have to prove the right-hand side. Let me go on. So what happened now is... Uh, this proof state has changed. I, ha I have to prove only the conclusion, not Q implies not P, but I have an assumption now, namely that P implies Q. And again, I have to prove an implication, not Q implies not P. Now, we know already how to prove an implication, namely, we assume the left-hand side and we prove the right-hand side. So now, assuming not Q to prove not P. Okay, so assume, and I call it NQ. And what happens is now that I have another assumption, not Q. And I still have to prove not P. So now we have to understand what negation is. Right? So I have, I have used implication, now we have to use negation. Now let me make a comment here. Uh, in, in, in Lean, a negation is also an implication. It says not P means P implies false. So how can we understand this? False is a bit of a tricky thing to explain. And my explanation for false is pigs have wings. If I want to say not P, then I say if P, then pigs have wings. Yeah? And that means not P. Right? Yeah? Yes. If, if you ask a girl, do you want to marry me? And she says, if I marry you, then pigs have wings. That means no, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah pigs might fly. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's not yeah. really. Yeah. Okay, so that's the idea. So it's just an implication. So now in this situation we are here, we want to prove not P, but that really means P implies false. So all we have to do, we have to assume P, and then we have to try to prove that pigs have things, right? Okay. So you see, now I have the assumption P and I have to prove false. So how can I prove false? How can I prove that pigs have wings? Now, actually, there's one way because I have an assumption called not Q. And not Q means if Q, then pigs have wings, right? So I want to prove pigs have wings and I have already an assumption which says if Q, then pigs have wings. So now I'm, uh, I'm using this. So this time I'm using a different tactic. I'm using uh, apply and apply nq. And what's happening is now I have to prove q because I wanted to prove if q, I mean, I, I, I used if q then picks, uh, picks have wings. Now uh, I'm used this, now I'm down to proving q. And again, how can I prove q? I look at my assumption, there's one assumption which says if P is in Q, I can use this and reduce proving Q to proving P. Okay, let me just do this. So I say apply uh, PQ, PQ. And now what happens is I have to prove P because if P is in Q, I want to prove Q. Now I'm down to proving just P. Yeah? But that's very easy because uh, I, I, I already know P, I have an assumption P, and I can just say exact P, and goals accomplished, I get a firework and I can get rid of my sorry, because I have done the whole proof. So that's an example of a very simple proof. This is one of these warm-up exercises to prove these propositional uh, tautologies uh, which, uh, which are, as I, as, I, as, I, as, I, as I say, it's a really pattern of reasoning, right? We, we learn things like, okay, if you want to prove not Q implies not P, then 
you 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 can you can you can prove p implies q. Okay. Um, now this is a very simple, uh, very simple tautology, and you think why do I have to invest all this hard work to do this? And the answer is you don't. So Lean has a built-in prover which can uh, which can which can automatically prove very simple propositions. Now, if I want to teach people how to learn proofs, then they're not allowed to use IT. It's IT. like having a pocket calculator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like cheating. But I wanted to show something. Actually, uh, uh, what's a proof for Lean? So here I just used example, but let me give this a name. It's called a theorem. P1. Okay. So I have. We now prove the theorem, and let's print the theorem. Okay, or well, print the proofs actually. Okay, no comma. So here, here we see the proof in Lean, and then this is like a, it's actually a functional program. You see the lambda here. So the proof is a functional program, but I don't have to write this program. Instead, I, I can use these tactics, and the clever tactics is IT Auto. Let's make does basically the same thing, because it produces also a proof object. If you see, so P2 is the automatic proof, and it basically produces the same proof as I have produced by hand. Yeah, so, but, but the point here is, even if I use these, these automatic tactics, they still produce a proof. Yeah? And this is the idea of, of, of Lean, it's always safe. Yeah? Uh, you, you can extend it, you can write very clever tactics, but you always have to give a, a evidence for this. Okay. okay, and I wanted to, to, to finish this part with a little uh, challenge to prove that the following is a tautology. It cannot be that P if and only if not P. So here's this if and only if uh, is defined and it, it just means uh, logical equivalence, P implies not P and not P implies P. So that's, uh, it's just defined as implication in both directions. Yeah? And we want, we want to show that this is not the case. Now, this turns out this is actually not, not so easy to do. I mean, it's sort of clear that it cannot be that the proposition is equivalent to its own negation, right? But to actually prove this is a bit of a challenge. Now, if I use IT Auto, it proves it. Yeah? It's very happy. But the challenge is to prove it without IT, IT Auto. Uh, tautologies in Lean, which are uh, a bit like doing the scales on the piano. But uh, now we maybe want to play a little song, a very simple song, I mean nothing complicated. We can categorically say that if we gave that to a person they would say there's a remote control in that image and some noise.